Hey everybody, it's Daniel here from InfoRes. Hope you're all doing well. So let's talk about the stock market here. We see that the S&P 500, NASDAQ, right, the tech index, just rallying higher and higher. In fact, it's making all-time highs and surpassed the top that we saw in 2022, right? And we see the equity markets, you know, just rallying, continuing to rally and rally, break all the bears and push them out of the trade. And now you got a lot of people contemplating whether we're going to see a recession, whether, you know, this crash is over with or whether, you know, we're, we are in a bull market. And a lot of people are contemplating that, hey, this is the bull market. We've been in a bull market. And since... Uh, January of uh, 2023 that rally till now people are considering that being the bull market and we're out of the recession there's no recession no crash or what have you right although it may look like that and every bear that continues to short this market it's very difficult to try to short equities especially um, especially if you're you're trying to predict or uh, a crash or recession don't recommend doing that but trying to short this market has been very difficult for the bears because every single time they get onto the trade guess what they're getting squeezed out and this will continue Right? The rally will continue, the rally will continue, continue, continue if there are still bears on the table, on the trading field, train, trying to short the markets and bring it down. Because what, that, what happens afterwards is if too many people are on one side of the trade and are, are short and are bearish, you're going to get these squeezes and it's just going to push the equity markets higher and higher like we're seeing in the S&P 500 and in NASDAQ. Now the thing is, here's the thing, we've got all kinds of data, we've been monitoring the economic data, we've been talking about the signs on this channel as well, been talking about certain companies like Google, Amazon and so on, laying off workers, but there's certain stocks and certain industries and certain sectors that are not at all time highs, right? And you have few stocks, the big tech stocks, that are the ones pulling the index higher yet the rest of the stocks out there are still not where they were back in January 2022 so haven't even hit all-time highs haven't even hit the peak of January 2022 where the market sold off so which are these indexes stocks ETFs am I talking about I'm going to share a couple of them with you here I'm going to just pull up a few of them Let's start with the XLB. The XLB is the materials ETF, ticker XLB, right? And if we take a look at where this is trading, that ETF is not at all time highs. So the materials ETF right now is not saying that, hey, you know, we're in a bull market. In fact, it's been trading sideways since November of 2022. And it's about from all time highs, about 12, 13% away from all time highs. All right. So that's the XLB ETF. Let's look at another, another sector energy, right? So if demand is doing well, that means energy should be doing well. That means we should see the XLE ETF do well also. So the XLE ETF has been also ranging since June 2022 trading sideways and the all-time highs was back in 2014 but if let's say we try to measure the highs of October 2022 um, that is about basically 18% away from from that level if we look at the financials right the economy, the recession should be doing fine. Remember about the banks and the financials, the banking sector that was in trouble, right? Remember that last year in March with the regional banks? So if that's not the case anymore and we're okay, shouldn't the banking sector be rallying aggressively? It has been, it has, you know, ticked up since November of 2023. But it's still not at all time highs the same way tech and NASDAQ is. And it's about 10% away from all time highs. So 
We haven't reached all-time highs there. If we look at industrials, right? Industrials, another ETF here, XLI. Now, XLI, it did touch all-time highs in December 2023. So, okay, I'll give you that one. That one's not that bad. Uh, let's take a look at real estate, XLRE. That's the ETF there. Um, so the real estate sector been hammered by rates, right? If again, the economy is fine, things, this is soft landing and we're getting rate cuts. Why shouldn't real estate be the area, the sector that everyone's flocking to? Now, although we did get an, a nice pump in November, 2023, December, 2023, but we're still far away from all time highs. We're about let's say about 33% away from all time highs on the XLRE ETF. All right, what about discretionary XLY ETF, right? Consumer discretionary. If there's no recession and everything's fine, shouldn't consumer discretionary also do well? Shouldn't companies be posting great earnings and the stock be at all time highs the same way these tech companies are posting all time highs? And NASDAQ and tech, well, if you look at that, it's about 23% away from all time highs there. Although it has picked up a rally since February of 2023, but still quite far away from all time highs. We're talking about 23%. Now, what about staples, right? Consumer staples, XLP, also been trading and ranging sideways from December 2021, but still away from all time highs. And we're about 12, 13% away uh, in the staples area. Healthcare, right? Everyone needs healthcare. Shouldn't that not be affected as well? Let's take a look. Well, it's not so far from all time highs, but it's been ranging and ranging since August of 2021. Been trading sideways for a very long time. And it's about 2.7% away from all time high. So you can see certain sectors a little bit better than others, right? For example, like the healthcare, industrials and so on. But you're, you're not seeing that euphoric, right? That, that crazy rally that you're seeing in tech, in QQQ, in NASDAQ, in S&P 500. Again, that's being driven by the big tech companies, right? If you look at NVIDIA also, same thing, crazy rally. You're not seeing that in the other sectors. So what is that telling you, right? That might be telling you that it, markets are not fully convinced that you know, we're out of the woods yet that, you know, this is purely soft landing because, hey, listen, the Fed told us three rate cuts are coming. Three rate cuts are coming this year. So bye, bye, bye. Why aren't everything going up higher? Do we need the confirmation? Do we need it? the markets or the Fed to start cutting rates and then, you know, the markets start rolling up higher and higher? I mean, we'll see. We'll see when, when that time comes. But you're, I'm, I'm not convinced and I'm not seeing that completely in the ETFs and the sector ETFs that we see. Let's look at other ones. Uh, communications, right? Um, communication services, XLC, uh, quite the rally since November 2022. Um, since November 2022, it's rallied about almost more than 60%, but far away from its all time highs. We're talking about it's still another 12, 14 percent. Um, utilities, XLU, right? Being defensive. How is the defensive sector? Okay, let's think about this for a second. Defensive sector, right? Defensive sector away from all time highs, about 30 percent, 28 to 30 percent from all time highs, okay? And since August of 2022, it's actually been on a downward trend and it's down about 20%. Okay, it's not making sense here. Well, you could argue that okay, money's flowing out of defensive and going into risk assets like technology. Okay, sure, sure, definitely, um, you know, money's flowing out, but shouldn't all the other sectors, anyways, be going moving up higher and not? in this weird environment where rates are higher 
QT is still running and money's flocking to risk assets, the assets, the tech assets that are very sensitive to rates, shouldn't it be moving more towards defensive utilities? No, Daniel, because everybody's selling utilities, everybody's selling defensive and everyone's going full risk on. So is if, if everyone's going full risk on, does that mean everyone's going full retard? Everyone's going full crazy, euphoric um, nonsense? And, and we should completely ignore that and, and, and not see that maybe this is getting a little bit too far, right? So again, another maybe sign there that, hey, defenses, defense sector has been moving down. Sure, you could say money may be flowing out and moving into risk assets, but it doesn't make sense entirely because they should all be moving up in tandem, maybe not as aggressively like tech, but you shouldn't be seeing it 28% down while the risk assets are just going up like, like a meme stock or Bitcoin or what have you right small cap all right let's not forget about small cap small cap stocks the growth the engine of the economy this is where majority of the jobs are majority of the jobs in the united states are made up from small businesses not the big companies small businesses and small caps have been ranging since july 2022 and it's about 25% away from all time highs, okay? So small caps not telling me the story about we are doing very, very well. And again, that ETF is IWM. Emerging index, EEM, the ticker's EEM. Now, emerging index also since February of 2021 has been down, been down about 30% and nowhere close to all time highs. Uh, let's take a look at Europe, VGK, not at all time highs as well. And uh, last time it peaked, um, let's, take, let's take for example, September, July of 2021, if we take that level, it is about 12% away. Now the all-time highs was really in 2008, but you also don't see strength in Europe. So yeah, all right, we are in a bull market. Everything is not at all-time highs except for big tech, except for QQQ, except for SPY being driven by the big tech companies. You've got defensive stocks that are down, real estate aggressively down. Oh, but don't worry, we're looking like this is a soft landing, everything's fine, and to the moon we go. Honestly, by looking at these, by looking at all these sector ETFs, and you can Google it, the sector ETFs, you can Google the tickers and, and look into it. To me, it's not a convincing story, or it's not convincing enough to tell me that, hey, yeah, we're good, we're fine, right? Although, yes, Sure, maybe in the first half of this year, we might see continuation of rally. We might see this euphoria continue. You might even see S&P 500 hit 5,000, right? Until when? Until when? Until things get worse off. And I do believe that, you know, whenever we're in this pause mode and rate cuts start to uh, be talked about, like we've been seeing since December of last year, you do get this euphoric rally in the markets. But then what happens after? What happens after if once you start to get the rate cuts and the market's expecting more, 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 and the Fed doesn't really deliver much, or something breaks in the economy, or there's a black swan event after all the tightening we've done, right? There's a couple of variables to keep in mind there. So I'm not fully convinced. I do still believe that there is something that lies around um, probably by the end of this year that may not look good. And I think all this euphoria, all this FOMO, all these squeezes and more FOMO that may come in the next coming months, is I don't think it's going to end well. So anyways, let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment below, subscribe, hit the like button, bell icon to be notified on the next video, and I'll see you guys around. Cheers. Bye.